everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and this is Lindy Stitches where I talk about cross stitch and other people watch me talk about cross stitch and find it entertaining. Welcome back. It is October, late October as I'm recording this. I'm not sure when it will get uploaded, but that's when it is for me. Thank you so much for your sweet comments on my last video regarding the passing of my friend. I um, found it very overwhelming to go back and try to reply to comments, and so I read them all, I appreciated them all. Um, you're all overwhelmingly sweet. I wasn't able to reply, and um, I am sorry, not sorry, about, about that. But thank you for interacting with me and responding to me. A lot of you really like that I read a poem, and I... I'm glad that you like that. A lot of you requested that I keep reading poems, and so I have another one prepared for you at the end of this video. But before that, I have a lot to talk about, and you're crooked, so let me fix you. Er, nope. Okay, before that, I have a lot to talk about, and, um, Let's get to it. I have two new releases to share with you right off the bat. Are you ready? The first is big. The, f the second is big. The first one is small. I have a small one here ready to show you. It is called Count Your Many Blessings. It's just a fun geometric pattern. I wanted to just play with colors and shapes, and so this is what I came up with. I am, I think I've, I've mentioned this before, and other pieces of mine definitely have to do with gratitude. It is a huge thing in my own life, and yeah, this pattern is very unique because you can actually stitch it in one color of floss by not coloring in, um, the sections on the outside. You can stitch this in one color. You can easily stitch it in two color. You can easily just make this a pick your own color palette and color it in yourself pattern. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. I just finished it into a small pillow. It is a quick stitch. And on the back I just... fabric buttons and um, so I've actually been ca literally counting my many blessings since 2011 and as of the day that I finished this which was September 18th I had counted up to 5,912 which sounds like a huge number but it's been seven years so I'm sure that I have received in the millions amount of blessings, but that's how many I have written down. I'm going to give you a quick zoom in. Quick zoom in. Count your many blessings and name them one by one. Of course, that's from the old hymn. Love it. I walk past this and it makes me sing the song. <gasps> Why is it so hard to start a video? I don't know. Okay. Hey everyone, it is now two weeks later since my last clip. Um, but if I keep chipping away at all the things that I'd like to share and show to you, then um, eventually it will compile itself into a video. So I was in the process of showing you my new releases, <laughs> um, and this one is what I am most excited about. It is a big piece that I I think is fantastic, and I hope that you will agree. I will just go ahead and show it to you. It is called Ride Forth Singing. <laughs> Yeah. 
and here is what it looks like. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> I have a guest in the room with me right now who is engaged in the noble pursuit of updating his Christmas Christmas wish list. Uh, so this is right for singing. It, it features a quote from King Alfred the Great. I will read it to you just in case you can't make it out yourself. It says, If thou hast a fearful thought, tell it not to a weakling. Whisper it to thy saddle bow and ride forth singing. And I just love how it turned out. Uh, it's stitched on 32 count picture this plus shale, which is a really beautiful gray, purple, nougat color. It comes across as a different color in different lighting. Um, I went to go take it off the wall just now and it looks gray where I ha normally hang it because it's not in direct sunlight, but now that I'm putting it right in front of the win window, it looks purple. It's a really pretty color. I used mostly Gentle Arts colors, um, but of course there is a DMC conversion. I used some of our favorites, including uh, Cinders. No, that's not Cinders. That's like Plum, I think. Cinders is right here. You can go sit down. <laughs> He's just standing by to make funny comments. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what you do in my videos. Yeah, I know that's what you do in your videos. I do it in my videos. Okay, truth be told, I do see him making videos sometimes, and then I go, like, shake my behind in them, so. I guess Mom, I'm... don't admit that to all <laughs> your other fans. They won't like it. <laughs> I have quite a few, though. Um, this is a really enjoyable stitch, and it actually goes, I don't know, it goes pretty quickly. Um, I really enjoyed it. Okay, so I'm just going to read you the little blurb that I wrote about King Alfred and what inspired me to chart that quote. And just researching him to write this blurb made me want to read more about him. He was a fascinating man. Alfred was the only king in British history to be called the Great. He began to rule his Saxon kingdom in southwest England at the age of 22, accepting the challenge of battling the Danish Vikings, who were successfully pillaging England and establishing permanent settlements. In his first year as king, Alfred fought nine battles against the Danes, and not all were victories. After much bloodshed, he established peace with the Danes to keep England from further war. When the peace was broken years later, Alfred finally subdued the Vikings by taking the city of London in 886 and pushing the Vikings into eastern England. England's Anglo-Saxon tribes then all acknowledged Alfred as their king. Alfred was a fierce warrior who not only protected his country and strengthened its people, he also restored education and promoted literacy. England experienced 100 years of peace thanks to him. Um, so that was interesting. I, I liked reading about King Alfred and um, the Vikings, of course, are always fascinating. Uh, but upon hearing this quote, I did not think about Alfred. I thought about two women in my life who have faced life-threatening cancer diagnoses with extreme courage. And I thank God for their example of bravery in the midst of hardship. I really like this quote. Um, if thou hast a fearful thought, tell it not to a weakling. Um, whisper it to thy saddle bow and ride forth singing. Just a reminder to be brave. So if you're interested in Ride Forth singing, I'll show it to you one more second. That will be listed in my Etsy shop. Um, you can find it at lindystitches.com. 
Okay, I have another pattern that is available to you, but it's not on my website. It's in a magazine, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine to be exact. Their mega Christmas issue just came out, and yours truly has a design in it, and I think it's pretty darn cute. You want to see? This is God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen by Lindy Stitches. And I love it. And I love it. And I love it. Uh, yeah. What's not to love? Uh, this small features three cozy little Christmas gentlemen, a cat, stockings, presents, top hats, what is not to love? Mistletoe. The wonderful Lois, and by wonderful I mean wonderful. completely awesome and amazing. Lois over at Lady.Creates finished this for me and she did a killer job. So we have the white mini pom -trom, pom poms, uh, the chenille trim tied with a bow at the end, potato back, Adorable. It's stitched on 32 count green Lugana. And I love it. You can find the pattern um, in the magazine. I'll link it down below. Did you know that the this line in the hymn actually does not mean take a cozy nap? It's not what it means. Look it up. Next I have two finishes to show you, well one FFO and one that's just has the stitching finished. I decided to whip out my cruel embroidery kit from Family Circle and finish up the stitching, which I did. I enjoyed it, however it killed my finger. Um, the tapestry needle, which is right here, is really big and really sharp. This isn't a tapestry needle, this is something else. I don't know, a cruel needle? It's got a really sharp tip, and I didn't realize that when I rotate my needle, I kind of scrape my finger. Well, when I'm stitching with a tapestry needle that's blunt, it doesn't do anything to me. <laughs> but uh, stitching for an extended period of time, there might have been some bloodshed. Mm. So here is my finished piece. I really love how uh, vibrant it is. And it, it wasn't hard, it, it was a little tricky. Um, you would think that this would be kind of no-brainer situation, but some of the shapes, um, just trying to maneuver the lines smoothly can be a little some of the petals look a little wonky, I'll just say that. French knots using yarn are extremely fun and rewarding. I would say if you have trouble with French knots or you want to practice knots, yarn is amazing. It doesn't tangle up on itself. Um, it's just really, it's an enjoyable sensation. It's an enjoyable sensation. And sometimes. Um, I will say this, and I'm, I'm curious if, if some of you have done some of these um, cheapo yarn cruel embroidery pieces, because I know that this is not, I mean, this is a family circle craft kit. These are not high quality materials. I'm under no illusion that they are. However, uh, when I had just a portion of this done, I think I had this flower done, and I had a little bit of puckering around. Someone mentioned, you know, be careful with your tension because it's puckering. And I thought, ooh, that it is puckering. I need to be careful. So I was very careful not to pull the yarn, not to yank, um, to make sure it was laying smoothly. However, you can see, I haven't ironed it, but you can see just how much, hopefully you can see, how much puckering the fabric does 
around the stitching and I it's because it's because look how much material I mean this stuff is 3d it's very texturally satisfying uh, but you're putting so much I mean this is like cushy you're putting so much ma yarn such a volume through this linen that how could it not pucker uh, I have just a fun habit of going to Etsy and looking at other vintage cruel and cross stitch pieces that are listed because sometimes you can get them for steals and they're interesting to look at and I definitely notice when I look at the vintage cruel and I see kits like this they're all puckered So I don't know if that's just the nature of the beast. I was thinking if I framed it, I could lace it tightly and maybe get rid of some of the puckering. But if you just made this into a pillow, there's no way that you could get rid of. I mean, unless you stuffed the daylights out of it. I don't know. It was fun. Um, am I drawn to try more cruel work? No, not really. <laughs> but I enjoyed it for what it was. And uh, I think with a cute frame, this could look... Very chic. Yeah. Okay, I'd like to show you my works in progress right now, what I've been stitching on for the last uh, couple months that I haven't been with you. Uh, this is what I'm currently working on. It is the Autumn Cat Sampler by Cooler Design Studio. The artwork is by Nancy Rossi. This whip is... Is it my oldest? It's not my oldest. My Chatelaine is my oldest, but... I really thought I would be done with this by now. I started it last August. And here is where I currently am. So this is skinny. It's like 7 inches, but it's 14 inches tall. And it just has so much, so many colors, and it, it does have a lot of back stitching that it's just really slow going and it doesn't seem like it holds my attention very long before I'm ready to just chuck it and work on something else. So uh, this rotation, I guess you could call it, I worked on these sunflowers. I did manage to finish them up as well as the back stitching and then I got the ge geese done up at the top. And now my goal is to go ahead and do this section with the birds, the orioles, and the apple tree, which is a good chunk of stitching. It's going to go all the I mean, there's a bird right here, so it's going to go all the way down here. I'm hoping to, I don't know, I just have like a light, non-serious goal of getting that part done by Thanksgiving. But we shall see. And then there's a gigantic section on the bottom still with the cat, the pumpkins, and the corn. So that's where that project is. The second project I'm going to show to you is uh, Le Brie de no. I don't have the cover page in here with me. It is a long dog sampler pattern from the out of print book. If you'd like to know how I got that pattern, you can go look for the story in my last videos, but here is where I am on this one. This one is extremely slow going. Um, so this is the first time I've done a big piece that is monochromatic. And I have a lot of saved patterns like in wish lists or you know on Instagram that I love the look of that look that are monochromatic and that I pictured myself stitching. However, I'd never done a big monochromatic piece. And while I love the look of this, and I know I'm going to love it when it's done, I find it extremely boring. And that's why it's taking me so long. I put a strand in and I am just, I'm bored, super bored. Um, this dark fabric isn't hard to stitch on. I can see it pretty well, unless it's, you know, nighttime and I don't have my light with me. Um, but I, just, uh, 
I really think I need color changes in my life. Um, looking back on it, I think if I would have maybe picked a lot of color, you know, picked a color palette and then gone at it, and maybe it would have, it probably would have held my interest longer, but on the other hand, then I would have been, you know, cross-stitch angsting over my color decisions, so, I don't know. I know I'm gonna love it when it's done. I like how it looks lacy, and it's gonna look really classic. I just, hmm, I just know now. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, it is, it is nice that there's so many different types of projects in cross stitch, and there's so many different types, you know, there's so many ways that you can stitch them, that's something that I love about this craft. But you just have to try things, <laughs> you have to try things before you know if it's for you. The next whip I will show you is Bag Ladies. This is an old sunset kit. And I love it. I think it's funny. I'm going to end up with a cat wall someday. This is how far I am. I have the cat in the bag. Um, he is not backstitched because I want to do the areas around his fur before I launch out into the hair lines, but he looks great. I did change his eye color and nose color. You know why. This is so cute. I need to put more work on that one, but I kind of feel like I'm having the opposite problem that I had a year ago. Was it a year ago? Um, when I was working on Giant Harry Potter and And a Forest Grew, and I was doing all motif stitching, and I, I was getting bored with it. I feel like I kind of jumped into the other ditch, which is everything I'm doing is detailed, chart-intensive stitching, except for my long dog sampler piece which, you know, bores me. I don't know. I need to be more mindful of that when I pick my next project to get the balance, right? Because now I feel like I could use some motif stitching. Okay, I made a ton of project progress on my Chatelaine Mushroom and Fern Mandala. I will put a picture of what it, it's going to look like here. I was half-heartedly thinking I would do the 100-day challenge with my Chatelaine, and I got really far into it. I wasn't taking pictures every day or anything like that. I kind of just had it in my head of what date I had started, and I was on fire working on this thing. I think I made it maybe 60 days of working on my Chatelaine, and then I, I wasn't done. I wanted to, it was my intention to keep going, but I had a week, like a whole week, where I couldn't, I had no time to sit down to my Chatelaine, and that week just totally killed it, because I sat down and I just, I wasn't feeling it anymore. It was kind of sad, but, case raw. So here's where I am. I did a lot of work. It doesn't look like a ton of work, <laughs> but it was a lot of work. Um, I did these little mushroom sections that are all the way around. Uh, that's a lot of one, on, one over one stitching. Um, I finished, I was like halfway done with this tree, so I finished that tree. I did this whole corner with the mushrooms, and there's, you know, back stitching here. There's, you know, specialty stitches all over the place. I did this whole tree, 
um, in the garlands and I did these mushrooms and then I started this tree and those trees I don't know it's not they're not hard I don't know what the, you're kind of I don't know I don't know if they're stitchy bug killers but I you know you have to stitch eight of them and they're not small you know they're they're big they're big trees I'm just gonna give you a close-up um, caterpillars, spiders, snail. That is the snail of death. It took me an hour to stitch that snail and I think it has 16 colors in it. Yeah, that snail is repeated four times. I will definitely be taking some shortcuts because I don't think that you can even appreciate. You can't, you really can't even tell that it has that many colors. All the reds kind of blend together, and so, yeah. I'm gonna save myself some work. Um, yeah. The grasshopper is adorable. And mushrooms. I really have fallen in, back in love with this project. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's a unique stitching feeling, uh, experience. It has a lot of inherent frustrations in it, which I think I've talked about before. Um, dealing with your own ignorance, dealing with all of the, by ignorance, I mean just getting back into what am I doing? <laughs> what fibers am I using here? I, I don't know. I, I changed that color. Why did I change that color? You know, all that stuff. Um, uh, why did I sub that out? Dealing with all of that, there's mistakes in the pattern. Uh, there's a color missing from the color key. You know, things like that that are frustrating when you're in the project and then um, it's just an intricate thing to do. It takes a lot of time. But it's very rewarding because it's gorgeous and it's unlike it's unlike any other design that you're gonna go find. So that's my mushroom and fern chatteling. Alright, time to show you the few purchases that I made since I last saw you. I was a good girl I was. All of these I can blame on Instagram and the people who hang out there. This is Better Homes and Gardens, a cross stitch Christmas celebration and stitches. Better Homes and Garden produced a lot of these books. I flipped through the rest of these projects naturally, but I really bought this only for one pattern. Um, I bought this on Amazon for like $4 and it was totally worth it even though I'm not too jazzed about the other patterns in this book. So, this is what I bought the book for. It is by Bright Needle and it is called Lo How a Rose Sampler and it has the lyrics of the hymn Lo How a Rose Air Blooming. It's really lovely. I've seen it worked up in different color schemes. It would be fun to play with, but the original colors are really beautiful. I love the words of this hymn, and I loved singing it in magical choir in high school, so sentimental value and all that makes you spend your money. It's, it's lovely, and I hope to stitch it soon. This book is super crackly. The next purchase I made is was also only a few dollars. It is an old booklet called The Country Diary Collection by Country Cross Stitch. I bought it for the cover image, which is adorable. So the patterns in this book uh, are based on 
Edith Holden's 1906 The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. There she is. Look at her. She was born in 1871 in Warwickshire. <laughs> Can you tell I'm from Indiana? She was born in Warwickshire in 1871. So she was going around journaling before journaling was cool. She had a diary and she wandered around England and Scotland. Okay, traveled around England and Scotland making drawings and nature observations. That's what she did. And these patterns are based on her drawings. So I'll give you a little tour. <laughs> I don't know why, but that lady strikes my fancy. Okay. This is Claus. You're so silly. Somebody left their candy on the counter. What is that? Soap? What? You could make some bath towels so that people could dry their hands on your cross stitch. I do like those swallows in all seriousness. And whoa. I can't shove my tape upside down. There we go. Whoa, you know, if you don't like lace or it makes you nauseous or you're scared of it, now is the time to turn your head. Oh, look at that hairbrush! With the cross stitch cover mirror. Is it a mirror? Olivia, let me know if you want me to send you that doll for your, um, your new shelf. Because I think she'd make a great addition. Lace. All the lace. No, I think these are very charming patterns. I bought it for the cover, like I said, because this bird has three birds. She has three baby birds to take care of. So that's probably all she does. All she does is she feeds them and she takes care of them and she cleans the nest because they they don't care about how the nest how clean the nest is. And then, you know, by the time she's ready for bed, she's really tired. She is not wandering around nature journaling. Ask me how I know. Another purchase inspired by Instagram. This is the Mice Block Cross Stitch Book. I can tell you nothing about this book other than that <laughs> it's in Japanese. I ordered it from Japan and it is the Mice Block Cross Stitch Book. That's all I can tell you. Um, yeah. You know, Instagram is a problem, and this is why it's a problem. You're connected with people all over the world, and sometimes, you know, things all over the world are not available to you. But this was available to me, so I went for it. I ordered it off an Etsy seller, and I had a great experience. Quick shipping. So this is all in Japanese, but, um... How do I get her picture right now? This is Mice Block. I think, I think she's Danish, but I could be wrong. Ba -ba. She lived from 1907 to 1999. I've seen plenty of her designs around, um, but this was the only product that I could find that I could purchase. She has a lot of out of print vintage books that are hard to find um, but I went for this one which was produced in Japan. I will give you a quick flip through of some cute stuff 
So it kind of has the look of some other Japanese other side of the world cross stitch designers. Really cute. Holland. Seems like that she then should be Dutch, but I'm not gonna. This is so cute. I mean, if you would have asked me, hey, wanna cross stitch a circus? I'd be like, yeah, not in my nightmares would I cross stitch a circus. But like, look at this. That is really cute, you know? That lion, that bear, what is he eating? Banging a pan, eating a fish? I don't know what he's doing, but it's cute. Look at this. Mice in a carriage with a giant duck? Yes. Um, someone I follow on Instagram is stitching this right now, but they are not English, so I'm not sure what they have to say about it. Do you ever, like, translate what the captions are on Instagram and it's, like, really wonky? <laughs> Sometimes. Oops, that was the pattern. Don't steal. Children being happy in a circle. Never seen that happen before. This is what I, I fell for. King of the gnomes having a birthday party. You've got the frog bringing the mail, the turtle bringing the cake. These weird birds, they're coming too. In the porcupine, he's bringing an apple. And there is a guinea pig. I don't even know, like this is kind of weird, but. Fairy tale images. There's another picture of Ms. Blanc. Oops, that was a chart. Don't steal. I think, all right, moving on. No chart on this page. It's a calendar. Wonder what language that is. Can someone tell me? This is cute. Skating scene. I like this. Stagecoach, dog on the top, dogs in the street. I love these. These old, weird Oldsmobiles and Fords. Thankfully, they have English labels, it looks like, some of them. Old, funky cars from around the world. How cute is that? That's really cute. How many times have I said the word cute? This is a really nice pattern. Look at this big, funky, colored tree with all the birds in it. I love that. It's huge. I uh, went to calculate farm scene, turkey. I went to calculate the stitch count on uh, the fairy, the pattern I bought the book for, this one. It is, <laughs> it is ginormous. It doesn't look that big, but it's, it's really huge. Ooh, look at these flowers. Apparently I'm just showing you everything. Okay, and the rest is instructions. Uh, the charts look very easy to read. For some reason, the fairy chart and one other chart are on this paper that come in the back. Um, but yeah, that fairy chart is 373 by 243 stitches. So if I did it on 32 count, it would be 23 inches by 15 inches. <laughs> hey honey, you want to wallpaper the wall with a, a gnome man's birthday party? Okay, the last thing I bought was a book light called the Lumi Light. I saw this on Arlene Cohen's Instagram, decided to get one. This is very useful. It's very lightweight. It has three different uh, brightness settings, one of which is warm and the other two are bright and super, super bright. I would show you, but really what's the point? And it's dead. It's rechargeable. It lasts a really long time, unless your kids play with it and leave it on. I like this for not only stitching other places, I can clip it over a Q-snap or you can wrangle it into your Q-snap holder to just sit there. 
um, when I'm doing handwork and holding a Q-snap, it's not too heavy. It's really perfect. I'll tell you what the perfect situation is for using this, though. It's when your family wants to watch a movie and you don't watch movies anymore because you cross-stitch all the time and just listen to the movie. I previously would, you know, they get the movie lighting going, which means turning off all the lights. I would sit down in my cross-stitch thrown in, boop, turn on my alt light, you know, movie atmosphere ruined. My family never complained about it, but, you know, it's just annoying. I can use this instead, and I can stitch in complete darkness using the lowest setting, and it doesn't ruin the atmosphere. Very handy. Okay, I believe that is all I had to share with you today. Thank you for joining me and continuing to come back to watch my videos. I really do appreciate it. I am now going to read you a poem. After the poem, I will show you my mushroom slideshow. I will show you my mushroom slideshow from my recent trip to Wisconsin. We took a family vacation to Wisconsin in November. It was actually great. <laughs> All right, the poem I'm going to read to you is from this book. I highly recommend if you would like to dip your foot into poetry, not only the book that I talked about in my last video, Good Poems by Garrison Keillor, very accessible. Billy Collins is a awesome poet. I There is no reading a Billy Collins poem and then scratching your head and being like, what in the world was that about? He's completely understandable, completely delightful. I read this book with a smile on my face. It is called Sailing Alone Around the Room. I'm going to read you the first poem. I've been a little bit snarky today. I don't know what that's about. But this is also a bit of a snarky poem. It is called Another Reason Why I Don't Keep a Gun in the House. The neighbor's dog will not stop barking. He is barking the same high rhythmic bark that he barks every time they leave the house. They must switch him on on their way out. The neighbor's dog will not Stop barking. I close all the windows in the house and put on a Beethoven symphony, full blast, but I can still hear him muffled under the music, barking, barking, barking. Now, I see him sitting in the orchestra, his head raised confidently, as if Beethoven had included the part of a barking dog. When the record finally ends, he is still barking. Sitting there in the oboe section, barking, his eyes fixed on the conductor who is entreating him with his baton. While the other musicians listen in respectful silence to the famous barking dog solo, that endless coda that first established Beethoven as an innovative genius. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. I will talk to you later, guys. Bye.